Hello, Leos. I'm going to get, what is that? A judgment? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get right into the reading, so whatever the cards want to say. Page of Wands, Four of Wands, Ten of Swords, Eight of Swords, Ace of Swords, Three of Wands, Queen of Pentacles, the Tower, the Moon, the Seven of Pentacles, what's coming after the, or Eight of Pentacles, sorry, the Seven of Wands, the World, and Death, and Knight of Swords, okay, let's see. I had to pause to look at it because it's just kind of a strange reading. I was kind of, I mean, I'm surprised it's not really like a love reading. I think it's more of a, um, more of a deep introspective reading. So this is either for you or this could be for your person. So just take it how it resonates. Um, but it looks like, tell me more about the page of wands. This is somebody who's kind of going through like a dark night of the soul and a psychic rebirth kind of awakening. Okay, so so again, either you or this person, but I feel like there's two different relationships that really impacted somebody here that they're needing to take a look at. I don't feel like, I'm not really getting current energy. This feels like the, more like the distant past, I would think. Um, one of these women may be an earth sign, Taurus, Vir Virgo, or, or Capricorn, but I'm seeing two different relationships. So there's one, so Page of Wands, um, this might have been somebody who, uh, I feel like this is the person in question. And I feel like this is when they were younger. I feel like they were more optimistic, full of hope, kind of inexperienced. But they saw this person as their end-all, be-all, four of wands. Like, they saw this as their life person, their life partner. And I feel like um, they were wrong about that. And they ended up getting stabbed in the back, ten of swords, is like, you know, betrayal, heartbreak, ending. And this was clarifying the page of wands. So I feel like either we've got the seven of pentacles, which is like patience, persistence, hard work, but it almost feels like, and this queen of swords could have been an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. So there was a, an earth sign and a or just, I mean, or just somebody in that energy. It doesn't necessarily have to be an air sign. It could just be with somebody with like, you know, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius in their chart, or they just embody that energy of the Queen of Swords. Um, but I feel like, I feel like with this Queen of Swords, there might have been miscommunication or there might have been he might have been waiting for something like not really taking control. Like this man here might not have been standing up. He might've just been like either, either he was patient and persistent and he was hoping things would just figure themselves out and they didn't like he wanted to build with her, but that karmic cycle wrapped up because she was the queen of swords because she, um, was tired of waiting for him to want to build with her. Uh, and again, I feel like this is a distant past relationship. Like, I feel like this was, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't feel like anything that's happened in, you know, recent months or anything like that. Um, the other thing I could, the other way I could take this is with this queen of swords, I feel like he might've, it might've been a one-sided relationship where he was putting all the effort in and he thought, you know, maybe eventually if I, if I just wait, if I just say the right, like he kind of blamed himself. He kind of took on the weight of this relationship. He might've, um, I feel like it was a power struggle between them. I really do feel like there was a power struggle. Like they would try to one up each other and he might have brought that into relationships afterwards. Like after her, it was like, there's some kind of like, maybe like PTSD or trauma here. There's something, there's something that happened with this queen of swords that kind of traumatized him that he brought that, their dynamic, the way they communicated. It's like he repeated that pattern in future relationships. You know what I mean? It almost like it, it like almost caused, I don't know, soul level damage or it's like it, it hit him in such a way mentally that it's like, 
it actually affected future relationships because it was like it was such like it might have been one traumatic memory or like multiple traumatic memories but it was like something that just like affected him that he took with him and it was almost like it's almost like a subconscious pattern that I think somebody's being asked to look at here because that pattern or originates from this relationship that didn't go as planned that's what I'm trying to sorry I'm trying to sort through what I'm channeling but yeah so, so another way I could take that is like he was waiting for something to happen here but I mean she was the queen of swords and he felt like you know like I, I was so patient I was waiting for this you know, I was waiting for this plant to grow. I was waiting for something to sprout. I was ready to see those those flowers come on this plant and then just nothing happened. You know, I just, I just put so much time and energy in and then this person was the queen of swords anyway. We didn't, we didn't build together like, you know, we wanted to. Instead, this karmic cycle wrapped up. And so I think there's almost like some anger, like what's the point in building with anybody? What's the point in, um, like, what's the point in giving anybody any kind of energy? Um, almost like a, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket again kind of energy and then with this ten of swords and this eight of swords and this could be like I said this is either you and you're being asked to look at subconscious patterns that you might be repeat like that you might be bringing into other relationships like you might have like a certain perspective that doesn't serve you anymore that stems from past relationships or this could be your person and maybe it's showing you their perspective. So, so again, take it how it resonates. But I almost feel like after it's, it's like whoever this was, was this queen of swords that this person wanted to be with. It's like, it didn't, it didn't pan out, you know, um, it ended up in a ton of swords instead. It ended up being more of a karmic lesson. And this person got kind of trapped in like eight of swords energy, which is kind of like a, I mean, it's a victim mentality, but it's not like necessarily, um, I mean, I don't feel like this person is like seeing themselves as a victim. I feel it's more like they felt trapped after that. They felt it's like after that heartbreak, it's like they 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 didn't trust themselves. They didn't trust other people. They they didn't know how to listen to their intuition. They didn't trust their intuition. And I feel like with the Ace of Swords, there's some kind of truth and clarity that's coming out here. I think this person is getting out of that eight of swords energy. They're getting out of that mentality and they're starting to see things clearly. They're starting to really, you know, somebody is doing a lot of inner work. They're doing the healing work. They're doing the shadow work. Finally, they're finally facing these inner demons head on. They're not just sweeping it under the rug anymore. They're actually really looking at past relationships, past patterns, seeing their perspective, seeing other people's perspective, like they're really being like deeply introspective right now. And they're really doing the healing work and they are getting somewhere. Like I am seeing that whoever is, whoever it is that's, that's doing this healing work, like it is, they are healing. Like they are, um, moving forward and becoming the person that they want to be. They, they are really, you know, there is truth and clarity coming out here. Ace of swords. This is kind of like that light bulb moment too, like some kind of epiphany coming out, because they're they're looking at themselves and they've they've seen themselves in this kind of eight of swords energy where they felt trapped. They felt like almost like it was just cloudy, like they didn't know there was just no clarity. There was no no truth, no justice. Like they were just kind of trapped in a very limited percept per uh, perspective because of what happened in this connection from the past. And now they're seeing things clearly. They're they're holding more space for people. They're kind of understanding other perspectives. Um, I think they're also acknowledging the red flags in this connection. So this might've been like, like, let's say this is, cause I feel like this is like a serious relationship. I feel like this might've been somebody that they were like married to. And I think they're also, cause I think in the past they were just like, they felt, um, almost betrayed by the universe or betrayed by love or betrayed. It, it was like this very deep sense of betrayal where they're like, well, I thought this was like my forever person and it wasn't. So, you know, I, I can't trust myself after that. And I think part of this clarity is that they're looking at this now and they're recognizing, well, they're recognizing their role in things, but they're more importantly, I think they're also recognizing that there was red flags with this queen of swords. There was, like, like there was something off about it. You know what I mean? Like it, 
Like, I feel like this person might, this woman might have always been kind of a queen of swords type, like cold, guarded, detached. Um, this man might have had like an attraction to women that were cold or women that played hard to get. Um, there was a lot of drama. There was a power, like lots of power struggles with this woman. This woman was not, this woman was like always trying to, almost like, I think she was very manipulative, like where she didn't really, um, she wasn't really like willing to be vulnerable or willing to be open with him. She wasn't willing to express love. She wasn't, uh, she just didn't have a very gentle energy. She didn't have a very soft energy. She was kind of a challenge. And I think this man is kind of recognizing that maybe he got lost in the fantasy of that more than the, the actual relationship more like it was kind of like the challenge turned him on the, it was almost like her queen of swords energy, her coldness playing hard to get, being guarded, being in a power struggle with him, uh, you know, all that, like he's realizing that wasn't true love. That was more of like a mental pattern that he was repeating, possibly even something from childhood. Um, this woman might have reminded him of someone from his childhood and, and he was attracted to that, but it's like, he's attracted. He was like attracted to the challenge. It feels like, and I feel like she confirmed his like deep rooted insecurities. You know what I mean? So it felt familiar. It felt comfortable. And I think he's looking at this now and he's like, wait a minute, like th that wasn't true love. Like I wasn't, he, he's recognizing because he always felt in the past, like he followed his heart with her and he got betrayed. And now I think his, pers her, his perspective has changed. And he's like, you know what? Like I wasn't really following my heart with her. I was following my mind. I was following, I liked the challenge. I liked the the subconscious patterns I was repeating. I liked, you know, maybe I liked the drama. Maybe I liked the power struggle. Um, it was familiar. It was comfortable, but he's kind of recognizing that he never really felt at home with her. He never felt like he could be his true self with her. He never, she might not have liked certain aspects about him. Like she might've like tried to change things or it was like, like one of those like women that kind of just nags and it's like, she might've tried to change things about him that he really loved about himself, like things that like made him who he is. Um, like, let's say that he let's, I feel like, like maybe he has like some hobbies or something that are like unconventional and she might not have liked that. Um, for some, cause I'm getting something about that. Like I'm getting something about like, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's an interesting energy. I feel like, I feel like there was just a lot of differences and he's kind of recognizing now he's like, wait a minute, like, cause he's, he is following his heart now more. He's, he's becoming, he, he's been in his head, I think a lot of his life. And I feel like he's, I feel like this man, whoever this is, is like following his heart more and he's following his intuition. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. Like my emotions, my heart, my intuition, that's a much different energy than what I've been in. That's like, it's like he's having this like light bulb moment, this epiphany. He's like, wait a minute. I thought I was following my heart my whole life. And I, I never was. I was never in tune with my emotions. I was never following my heart. I was always following my mind. I was always following, you know, my mental patterns, uh, these subconscious patterns. Um, and I think that's making him kind of feel better too, because he's like, well, wait, well, you know, I didn't get screwed over them. Like if I had, if I had been honest and actually followed my heart, I would have been let, let away from this person a long time ago. Um, but it was the fact that he was following his mind instead of his heart that kind of kept him in the situation with her, kind of kept him repeating those, those, uh, karmic cycles, those subconscious patterns, you know, uh, going after a challenge, but, but yeah, he's recognizing that this woman never really understood him. She never really loved him for the right reasons. She might've wanted his money. Um, I, there is something with money where I think she really liked the like status or money or something like that was really important to her. Um, appearances were really important to her. And, uh, yeah, I, f I feel like he's also, Let's see what else I can feel here off, off this. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a really good energy because he's, he's finally, it's like, he's been so stubborn. He's been like stubbornly adamant that he's like, you know, I, I did follow my heart. I did, I did. And now he's like, wait a minute. No, I didn't. I never followed my heart before. I always followed my, oops, sorry. I always followed my mind. I always fo followed these patterns before. Um, I feel like, let me see here. I feel like he's also recognizing how 
how this Queen of Swords might have rubbed off on him, how like certain characteristics and personality traits that she had, he kind of took those on himself. It might have been like, I don't know, it's a weird thing, but it's almost like maybe he like subconsciously wanted to save her. Like he felt like he couldn't save someone else in his life and he wanted to save her or he wanted to like, how do I explain this energy? I don't, I, I'm like, I'm getting a sense of how it happened subconsciously, but it was almost like, almost like instead of lifting her up to his level, he went down to her level is kind of what I feel. Like if she gaslit him or she manipulated him or, or she was nagging or she made everything a power struggle, she, it's, it's like she kind of gave him this toxic view of relationships. She kind of put it, the idea in his head that, you know, relationships are just all a power struggle it's just all pride and ego it's just all trying to one-up each other um like it was always some kind of like mental game you know what I mean where it's like real love isn't like a game like that like there might be yeah there's like pride and there's issues and there might be little patterns that people repeat but like you know like yeah people do play games sometimes but this is like this is like major games you know what I mean it's like a different energy it's like this is like all games like there was no like, she wouldn't give a shit if she broke this man's heart as long as she felt like she won. You know what I mean? Like, if she, instead of a person that if she's wrong in an argument, she she doesn't care. She, she needs to be right at all costs. You know what I mean? So it's like she didn't really, like, have real love for this. I mean, she, she you know what I mean? It was just all about her. Um... Anyway, what what I'm getting from this is, oh yeah, so so sorry, I was channeling for a minute there and I got kind of sidetracked. And I know I'm kind of going on. I think this will be re relevant. Like if this is your person that's going through this, I think there's something that's going to come out in this reading that's basically trying to help you understand their perspective and why they are the way that they are. So I hope that makes sense. But but yeah, it's almost like she, what I was saying is it, it's almost like instead of pulling her up to his level, he kind of just sunk down to her level. It's kind of like, you know, if she was nagging, gaslighting, being manipulative, playing games. It's like at a certain point, I think he kind of got exhausted and just went with it. But I almost think there was something subconscious that happened where it was like with his insecurities. I feel like he just, how do I explain this energy? It's almost like he, like he took on some of her personality traits. Like, it's, it's almost like he didn't want to be above her. He wanted to be equals, and he realized that she wasn't going to get on his level, so he just went down to her level. You know what I mean? Like, he might have had plans for them, and he might have had things that, that, you know, he wanted them to do together. And if she wasn't meeting him there, if she wasn't meeting him where he was at, he was like, well, I don't want to lose her. I don't want to seem like I'm better than her. Um, so, so eventually he just kind of caved in and he kind of just, you know, became that king of swords to match her queen of swords energy. And I almost feel like this queen of swords was like a psychic vampire type where it's like some part of her, some deep part of her soul kind of wanted to drag this person down to her level. You know, this is a deeply insecure woman who didn't want, she didn't want to change and she didn't want him to be above her. So she almost guilt tripped him in a way. It's it's a really weird, I'm trying to explain the process, but it's like this really weird mental manipulation that I get where it's almost like she strategically kind of broke him down over time and again, dragged him down to her level. And, and he became, he used to be a king of cups. He used to be more emotional, more receptive. And he became a king of swords to match her. And I feel like that's one of the things that this person is recognizing now, because like I said, he's been introspective and he's having these epiphanies. He's realizing that this was not true love. Um, he's realizing this woman just wanted him for money or appearances, or she just wanted his energy, but she never really loved him for the right reasons. Um, if there was an argument, it wasn't about, the arguments weren't really about understanding each other or deepening the relationship. The arguments, at least on her end, I feel like the arguments were just more about winning, just more about like, I'm going to one up you. Um, and, and so, so yeah, he's, he's realizing that he's having these epiphanies. He's like, okay, like, you know, I want to follow my heart for the first time in my life because I never have before. This was, this was a mental pattern. Um, and he's, he's looking at that. He might be looking at childhood wounds too, or, you know, these patterns might've stemmed from, 
And also just, you know, he's recognizing the the personality traits of the Queen of Swords that he took on because he loved her, because he just kind of, it's almost like, it's hard to explain it, but it's almost like he lost himself to her. Like he kind of became like engulfed in her energy. Like he kind of became, uh, how do I explain this energy? It's so weird. It's like, I see almost like a merge, like her soul kind of like eating his soul or something, you know, but like, like it, it, it's, it's a weird energy where it's like, they just became like enmeshed, you know what I mean? Where he stopped, he, he kind of just started mirroring her energy back to her. He kind of just started like, it, it, it's hard to explain it, but it's, it's like, he just kind of, um, it's, it's like, she just kind of sucked him into him. Like she just kind of like, like. Like he stopped having his own personality almost, or he stopped having his own friends. He stopped having his own like hobbies and ideals. It was almost, I mean, he might've to an extent, like he still had some things that he liked, of course, but it was like, like I don't know, like it just, just, a, just somebody that just broke him down. Basically. It's like, they really broke him down and kind of built him up to what she wanted him to be in a way. Um, like he caved in at a certain point. And so I think this person's also recognizing that he might have, um, so if you're, if you're watching this for some, like if, if this is not you, if this isn't you having these epiphanies, if this is your person that's having these epiphanies about, um, I mean, if this is, this, if this is for your person, like an insight into like why you do the things you do or whatever, um, I feel like he's also recognizing that he has a fear of codependency and he has a fear of losing himself in a connection because of what he went through with this queen of swords because it's like he lost himself to her like he kind of just caved and almost like became one with her but she was so toxic that it was like he was like trapped with her it wasn't like a good merge you know what I mean um and so now there's like this fear of not being independent there's this fear of like him losing himself to somebody else and having a repeat or, or whatnot um, and I think that this, I think this man is kind of recognizing that, um, that that fear stems from this connection. So it's not, you know, if you love someone, like you're going to lose yourself to them a little bit, you know, like you, you you're still going to have your hobbies and your friends and the things that you like to do outside the relationship, your own career, like you're going to have that sense of independence, but I mean, you're going to lose yourself to them a little bit as in like. Not in the way that the not not in the way that you lost yourself to her or that you know he lost himself to her like not like not in a toxic way like that but you're gonna lose yourself in a, a little bit in the sense that like you're gonna need that person you know what I mean like that's that's love you know like people need people um, <coughs> I just mean that like when you love someone you're gonna need them you're gonna you're gonna be vulnerable with them. Um, sorry, I started like choking on something. <laughs> Someone might have some throat chakra blocks that they're starting, starting to clear. Oh, damn. But, um, but yeah, it's like, you're gonna, you're gonna lose yourself to a person to a degree because it's like, that's human nature. Like when you love someone there, you, you know, you do need them. You do want them in your life. They are important to you. They do become an important part of your life. So I think that this person is also starting to kind of realize that, <clears throat> oh my gosh, sorry. I'm like choking over here. <laughs> oh, somebody got some throat chakra blocks to clear out for sure. <laughs> Damn. So I think this person is kind of changing their perspective too to understand that, you know, losing yourself to somebody doesn't, it's not going to look like this most of the time. You know, you can, you can merge with someone in a way if they, if they're your actual person. And you know that you have a safe space with them. You know that they're, you know, that it's not about money or it's not a power struggle. You know that like they really love you and that if you're vulnerable with them, they're going to hold a safe space for you. They're not going to use your secrets against you later on. They're not going to try to manipulate you with whatever information you give them. So I think this person is recognizing that too as well. They're recognizing that. You know, it is, it's, it's human nature to need people. Um, 
that it's normal to need people. You just have to be kind of, you know, careful and make sure the person that you're really opening up to and being vulnerable is not the queen of swords. You know, you want somebody that is going to be your other half, be your counterpart and and give you that safe space to be vulnerable and be open. <clears throat> Um, another, th okay, so I'm going to move on to this other connection here too, but another thing that I'm seeing with this is, and like what I was talking about is I feel like he's recognizing personality traits that he took from her. Like, I, cause I feel like this man is normally a, a king of cups type. I think he's normally more emotional, more romantic, and he's tuning into that side of himself now. And I think, again, again, I think he became the King of Swords to match her Queen of Swords, but he's not naturally a King of Swords type. You know what I mean? That was just more the d dynamics of the connection. And again, just like wanting to be with her and wanting to merge with her. So he took on that energy. He matched her. <clears throat> he kind of broke down. He went through all that. Um, so he's finding his true self finally. He's, he's recognizing, it's a really beautiful thing because he has this epiphany. He's having these epiphanies. He's had epiphanies. He's going to have more epiphanies. He's going to have more clarity coming in just as long as he's willing to do the shadow work, as long as he's willing to look at these things and, and be open and do the healing work. Because <clears throat> um, he's recognizing, he's like, wait a minute, like, no, I'm a king of cups. Like, I, I just thought that I was a king of swords because I became that to match her. And he's like, he's finding his true self again. So that's a really good energy. He's also noticing patterns in their relationship that he might have brought into future relationships. Like if she made everything a power struggle, it might have almost given him like PTSD or anxiety to a point where he's like terrified of like he like if someone's arguing, he might just see it as like a battle. Like if he's having like arguments with his friends, he's like, it's like, I have to be right. I have to win this battle instead of like, like, like paying attention to the anger and not like seeing what's behind the anger and not hearing what's being said, just immediately kind of going into a defensive position because of what he went through with her. You know, there might be that fear of conflict because of what he's gone through with her. Um, so he's kind of recognizing that like arguments aren't really like a power struggle. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about understanding each other and uh, you know, having that clarity and having, you know, finding that that middle ground, that that deep understanding of each other. So he's kind of changing his perspective on um, arguments as well and, and things of that nature. Um, and, and again, just just recognizing the personality traits that he that he kind of absorbed from her and also recognizing patterns of in their relationship that he's brought forward into other relationships. And I think he's changing this now. I think he's had that clarity and he's like, you know what? I'm not, I don't want to be associated with this energy anymore. I want to find my true self. I want to be the person I was before this queen of swords came into my life. Um, so he's reconnecting with himself. He's reconnecting with his intuition. He's, he's recognizing that this was, again, repeated mental patterns, subconscious patterns, but not true love. So he's kind of realizing that it is safe to follow his heart because, you know, again, he never really followed his heart before. This wasn't following his heart. This was following his mind. I feel like there was also a queen of pentacles. Sorry, I'm like choking. <laughs> um, there was a queen of pentacles, too. That he was like waiting and waiting and waiting for the ships to sail in. And I think either he waited too long or I don't know. It's like he waited for something that just did not pan out. There was a tower moment. There was, I think with the moon, there might have been things that came to light about this Queen of Pentacles. Like... This could be somebody, again, that was after his money as well. Cause I see her and she's like looking at this, this pentacle. It's like, that's all she's focused on. She doesn't, he's over here waiting. She doesn't give a shit that he's waiting. She's just like, I'm focused on this, you know, like she doesn't give a shit. Um, the tower. Yeah. There was like a tower moment here. There was some kind of like overnight change. Like she did something. I think there might've been cheating. There might've been something with this other woman. It was like, there's something that came to light about her. And with the moon, I feel like. Just some kind of secret that was revealed. Unfortunately, I think that he, 
Let's see here. Let me pull these cards up. Sorry. I think with the Eight of Pentacles too, I think... See, this man has more subconscious patterns. And again, I feel like this man is actually transforming. Like the death card, we've got the world card, which is like completing cycles, completing karmic lessons. Like this man is finally, like if this is somebody that you've been waiting on, if this is like a man that you're like, when is he going to change? When is he going to be vulnerable with me? You know, this reading was important to kind of let you know like what he's been through in the past that's made him made him the way that he is not to excuse it but just to have a deeper understanding of him but to also understand that he is wrapping those cycles up he's not just staying in the eight of swords victim mentality like it's a killer kill be world like screw everybody like he's getting out of that mentality he's having the clarity he's finally wrapping the cycles up the death card death is about transformation it's like a death and rebirth it's like a going through that process you know this man is coming out of the dark night of the soul and he's starting to go through a psychic awakening, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, so it's saying, you know, either this is you and it's confirmation, like you are healing, you are doing, and healing isn't linear. It's, it's, it's up and down. It can be really messy, you know? So it's, it's like, keep doing the, the inner work, keep doing the healing work. Um, you know, keep doing the shadow work. Uh, but but yeah, I think the issue here is for some, I feel like I think there was two major relationships that really messed him up. There was a Queen of Swords and a Queen of Pentacles. And with the Eight of Pentacles here, Eight of Pentacles is about like studying knowledge. Like you see this man working on something. You see how he's kind of like engraving. It's almost like he's engraving something in his head, in his subconscious because of these two relationships that he went through. It's like he's engraving something here. Like he's engraving a belief into his mind where he's like, people can't be trusted or it's not safe to follow your heart or it's not safe to be vulnerable or it's not you, just something. So there's some kind of belief. So this man went from being more of a romantic, more emotional King of Cups type to being more of a King of Swords type. And it's almost like he was at war with himself. Like he was like exhausting himself because he was going against his better nature. He was going against who he really is. It was almost like there was like two sides to his personality after he went through this he was like you know I'm going to be logical I can't trust anybody and I think that's what he what he's recognizing now is that he wasn't really being logical he he when he was in this low depressed state when he went through this whatever these beliefs were that he ingrained in his subconscious they were not good beliefs they weren't helpful beliefs these beliefs are actually beliefs that kind of made him be at war with himself they made him at odds with himself like there was like a conflict with himself based on on these beliefs that he developed from these these two major failed failed relationships so again could be like you can't trust people uh, you can't be your true self around anybody you have to um you have to win arguments at all costs you know you have to your pride is more important than love uh People are only out for themselves, just some kind of very negative beliefs that he like really held on to because he's like, I don't ever want to feel that again. I don't ever want to be embarrassed like that again. You know, I want to have the upper hand now. I want to be in charge. And, and in the end, I think it only made him more lonely because it's like it made him at war with himself again with the, with the Southern of Wands here. It's like he's standing, he's standing his ground at all costs, you know, fighting these invisible demons but it's it's like it's like he stopped being his true self and he started you know he had this conflict with himself that made him even more alone and more disconnected more disconnected from from love from his feelings from his spirit guides but but again with this with the world card and the death card here this cycle is ending these psych these cycles whatever these subconscious beliefs are he's finally looking at them he's finally acknowledging them he's not just in the past, he would just go with them. He's like, no, like, like, you know, I have to win at all costs. I have to protect myself. And now he's actually looking at these patterns. Um, he's, he's looking at, you know, the, the belief systems that he's, he's learned from, you know, childhood relationships from these two major, uh, failed relationships. He's, he's looking at, you know, personality traits that he took on 
that he's that he, from these relationships that are not actually who he really is, but they just kind of stem from this, from, mostly from this Queen of Swords. You know, like he's kind of separating himself from this Queen of Swords now. He's like, wait a minute, like I'm not that person. Like that was all her. I just became like her. I, I matched her energy. And so now he's finding his true self again. He's separating himself from her energy and, and recognizing who he really is, like who he wants to be too. And he's becoming that person. Um, and again, also recognizing like patterns and relationships that he took from, from these that he started, you know, repeating in other relationships and just being at war with himself. But yeah, that cycle is ending. What else do you want to say about this? Yeah. Loyalty, stability, queen of wands could be going towards a queen of wands with loyalty and stability. Four of cups judgment if you're the queen of wands he might also be looking at what making a judgment call on like why he rejected this why he was so afraid of love and he's understanding like these patterns and whatnot and now he's seeing you as more of like an empress type queen of cups the hierophant strength of swords nine of swords ace of cups yeah i think it's saying a couple things so if you're this queen of wands queen of cups that he is coming towards slowly i feel like, like if this is if this is your story if this is like your person's story and you're this person that's like wondering like you know if you're, if you're like a leo and you're like why is my person always so distant why are they why are they like this um they are doing the shadow work they are healing with strength it is kind of saying uh with this card, this is also about someone taming their urges that might be holding back the impulse to lash out or to say something impulsively. So if you're this woman and you're kind of impatient with this, you're tired of, of waiting for, for, you know, it's like slow progress. The Knight of Pentacles is a very loyal, stable knight, but he is the slowest moving knight in the deck. So some of you are like, like you want this commitment, this, this solid foundation with this person, you're tired of waiting. Um, and so it's kind of saying to have strength to not lash out. It's giving you an understanding. So this, so if this is for your person, it might be kind of trying to give you a deeper understanding into them because some of you might not understand what's going on behind the scenes. Like you might not have been aware that they were doing the shadow work, that they were being introspective, that they're working on themselves, that they're changing. You might have just assumed it's just, you know, same old shit as before, um, might have assumed that they're not healing, that they're not working on themselves, that they're not really uh, making any effort towards you. And it might be hard to like hold back um, impulses, like, you know, the, the need to like, like the anger or pain or that need to like lash out or say something or um, uh, get impatient. It, it's kind of like, you know, trying to give you some insight into like what this person's going through. So you do understand that they are making progress, even if that progress is just behind the scenes. Um, I mean, this person does need to reach out to you though. They do need to make some kind of effort. They do need to, even if they are working on themselves and healing and doing a lot behind the scenes, like, if they expect you to be patient and understanding and hold space for them, they still need to make some kind of effort, even if it's just a gesture, just, you know, let's go out for coffee or let's go somewhere. I want to see you. Um, you know, like, like they do need to make some type of effort towards you if they expect you to be patient and, and hold space for them and be understanding while they go through these, these, this healing and this kind of death and rebirth process. Um, but yeah, it's basically saying like, don't lash out at them. Don't like be kind of mindful of, of what you say, because if you say the wrong thing, they could end up being in a king of swords energy and having anxiety and they might misunderstand your energy too. They might think that you're rejecting them when really you're just kind of like upset and hurt and you're just wanting this person's love and attention, but they might, um, they might be quick to get defensive and misunderstand what you're trying to say. You know what I mean? They might get like in their head anxiety, but, but yeah, if you can, um, you know, again, don't, don't say things that you don't mean right now. Basically don't, don't get upset and, and angry right now, basically. 
Um, but there is a love offer here. It looks like Ace of Cups. There is there is mutual love here. There is there is love here. There is a balance here. Um, what else? Oh damn, this reading ended up being a lot. Yeah, Two of Cups, mutual love, King of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles. 10 of pentacles so yeah you go from like this little offer i think it's also saying like 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 i said this person does if this is your person and you're getting insight into like why they are the way they are this person does need to make a gesture for sure even if it's just the page of pentacles which is like a little gesture to show that they care to show that they want you in their life that you're important to them but that page of pentacles is going to go to the 10 of pentacles it's going to go to this is like this is like everything this is like true love. You see they have like, there's like a, like animals here. Um, stability, just like everything. It's like, so I think it's kind of saying there's like a process here where it's like, even if it's just a small gesture, take the small gesture, be open, be observant to those little gestures because they will lead to that, that stability, that foundation. You guys are going to be building this foundation together basically and having this 10 of pentacles. Um, so as long as they are making at least, you know, little gestures and showing you that you're important to them, then, you know, but again, I wouldn't be patient with somebody who's not doing anything. If they're not doing anything at all, screw that. No, but, but if they are making little gestures, if they are, you know, if they do have more work to do on themselves, but they're like, well, I do want to go for coffee or I do want to see you or, you know, Hey, I've been thinking about you, like be receptive to those little gestures, because like I said, it's going to lead to to that stability. You guys are going to be building that foundation together over time. Um, yeah, this reading went longer than I expected, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's either, you know, just insight for you. If, if you're dealing with somebody and you're having a hard time being patient, it's, it's saying that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. They're doing a lot of work on themselves. So just kind of be understanding with that as long as they're showing up for you anyway and still making an effort towards you while they're doing this, you know, that's what, that's what counts is that, you know, they're finding that balance. Um, or if this is for you, this might just be confirmation that, cause some of you might be like doing the shadow work and doing the healing and you might be like, you know, like I was saying, like healing isn't linear. Healing is, healing is messy. It's, it's, it's hot. It's up and down. There's, you know what I mean? Like you're going to have days when you're just really depressed and everything feels dark. And then you're going to have really good days when you feel great. Um, it's, it, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's up and down a lot, but it's, it's, you're still on that path. You're still doing the healing work. So that might've been confirmation for somebody too, who might like get in their head and have anxiety and be like, Oh, am I even changing? Am I even like, you know, am I even really healing? Is anything ever going to change? Am, am, you know, am I really going to be able to become the person I want to be? Am I really going to be able to be who I used to be before the trauma? Um, I mean, the answer is yes. I mean, you're becoming a different person, but you're going to reconnect with those old lost parts of yourself, that romantic side, that emotional side. Um, and you're going to become someone new. I mean, you're going to take the karmic lessons and kind of find that balance. But it's really, you know, it, it's basically just confirmation like, yes, you are healing. Keep doing the work. Keep keep becoming the person that you want to be. Keep doing the shadow work. Keep looking at these patterns and fixing them. Um, be vulnerable. You know, let your pride go. Uh, really, really, yeah, really just keep working on yourself. And again, look at whatever these whatever these subconscious beliefs are that you ingrained into your mind based on what you went through, it's like, you know, it's time to, if you haven't already, some of you already have, but for those that haven't, it's like time to look at these and recognize how they stem from these relationships and recognize that they really have no basis in your current reality. They they come from these two specific connections, but not everyone is is like these exes, not everyone, or, you know, could be friends or whoever these people were it's like that you can't just base your, your whole belief system off these two toxic people that you dealt with in the past. You know what I mean? So it's like looking at the subconscious patterns, the, the beliefs, whatever has been holding you back. Um, and recognizing that doesn't, it might've applied to them, but it doesn't apply to future relationships. It doesn't, it, it's not in alignment with who you want to be. You know what I mean? Like you can't hold on to these toxic belief patterns and still be the person you want to be at the same time. So you're going to have to take a look at these and, 
and kind of find that balance and almost like develop a new belief system that's more in alignment with who you are on a soul level and who you're trying to become and the things that you're trying to do and the people you're trying to be with. So um, anyway, I hope that helps somebody. Uh, like I said, any comments are appreciated. Thank you guys for watching.